So what exactly is sleep apnea? Sleep apnea is a period of time during sleep where you are not breathing. You are trying to breathe, but there's no airflow. Some of the causes could be something as simple as the palate, the back of the throat is a little bit floppy, and that's a muscle, and when you're asleep, that muscle's very relaxed, and you literally are choking on that muscle. Obesity is a very common cause of sleep apnea. If you're obese, there's too much weight on your neck. Your neck is large, you're lying down, all of your muscles are collapsed. What we're looking at in a sleep study is how often you stop breathing, how long you stop breathing for, and how many times per hour that's happening throughout the night. If you do have sleep apnea, the good news is there are a number of effective treatment options in addition to traditional air mask therapy. Maybe something as simple as you're a little bit overweight, your neck is big, you need to lose 5, 10, 15 pounds, lose that weight, and your sleep apnea may go away. Other possible options would be an oral appliance, sort of like a bite block, which opens up your mouth, allows for airflow during the night. There are multiple surgical treatments now, very, very minimal. Many of them can be done in the office as an outpatient. So if you or your loved one snores, don't panic, but do get it checked out. Earplugs or a separate room or a separate bed is not a treatment for sleep apnea. If it's a little bit of noise, barely audible, that's usually okay. Anything more than that needs to be addressed. Dr. Shapiro, I have a question. Does drinking alcohol affect your risk of sleep apnea? Alcohol can absolutely affect your sleep and can make sleep apnea worse. It can even make you snore when you don't normally snore. Alcohol is a very strong sedative. It will relax your muscles and your snoring and sleep apnea will be worse when you're drinking alcohol. Very interesting. Thank you, Dr. Shapiro. Do you think you could have sleep apnea? Well, take our sleep quiz coming up later in the show. One of the most serious, life-threatening risks for young kids in America is choking. Even more surprising is that food might pose the biggest danger. Because unlike toys, food carries no warning label. The toddler years are the most concerning age ranges for choking. Kids under three, over 10 month olds, those are the highest risk ages for choking accidents. In the 1990s, the Child Protection Safety Act enforced that all toys with small parts have warning labels. However, there is no mandate to label foods as choking risks. So something we're looking at here now at UCLA is what foods are really safe for children under two years old, under three years old. And we're looking at that now to see what we can do to get these foods labeled. For now, Dr. Shapiro says parents should educate themselves about what foods present the greatest choking risk to their children. The thing about choking accidents is they are preventable. If you have a little bit of knowledge as far as what your child is at risk for based on their age and based on what you have in your home, most choking accidents are preventable. So what we have here is essentially a variety of foods that are unsafe for children. And by that I mean these children. Certainly not for Cadence, who's not quite a year. All of these foods are very significant choking risks for young children popcorn, raw vegetables, any nuts or seeds, hard candy, gum, grapes, really should be avoided in young children. Hot dogs are the one thing that can be eaten, but they have to be cut appropriately. What you wanna do is cut the hot dog lengthwise first, and then after that to cut little pieces. So you're not giving your children the circles which they're more likely to choke on. This sort of piece is a much more significant choking hazard than something like this, right. especially for someone like Miles. Okay. Another thing is that even in child safe foods, not to let your kids, and as hard as it is sitting in traffic, not to let them eat in their car seats. Because okay. you really don't know what's going on right. back there. You're focusing on the road. It sounds nice and quiet because they're eating, but you don't know if they've choked on something. I've treated many children, most of them very severe, who've choked on all of these foods here. And it is a very serious problem, and it's a preventable problem. If you're not sure if a food is safe for your child, don't give it to them. Ask your doctor. Check with the American Academy of Pediatrics. Always err on the side of safety with your food and your child.